Welcome to our service today. Let us begin with our scriptural call to worship from 1 John 3, 1 through 7. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. How great is the love that the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, now we are God's children. What we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. I invite you to please stand if you're able as we sing, Christ, dis Christians, dismiss your fears. <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful day. It's a little crisp and cool out there, but the sun is shining, so God is showing himself today to us and all of his creation. This day, the third Sunday of Easter, uh, some of the announcements I have, I remind each of you that we do have people that are worshiping in the sanctuary, and we also have those who are worshiping in their cars. So we are very happy that you have come today to be with us on this third Sunday of Easter. I do remind you that the emails that come out via email through uh, New Hope email or my personal email are information that we try to send to you to keep you aware of all the goings on of the church and the things. We try not to flood you with too many emails, but to at least keep you updated on what's going on. Right now, uh, I want to thank all of you for being so uh, diligent about, you know, keeping your distance, wearing your mask and all, because COVID is still alive and well, and it still continues to uh, attack people. So uh, thank you so much for, for honoring that and being so diligent about that. Let us now go into our prayer concerns that we have, and some of those are... I would ask that you continue to pray for the frontline workers and the doctors and medical people, the staff, that those that care for the 
uh, COVID patients. I talked with someone yesterday and they were saying it seems like one day it goes down and then the next day it goes up. And of course, most of the people don't seem to be quite as sick as they were originally, but they, they're still, still around and still affecting people. I do pray for peace and unity in our country and in the world at large. And I ask for you to pray for myself as the pastor, for our task force team, and for the board of elders as we serve you. I ask you to pray for Sarah, for Eva, for Joe, Sean, Alan, Phyllis, Faye, Reese, Bernice, and Leah. There are other things that we have on our prayer list. You have them before you. Uh, please continue to pray for the PEC as they continue to make different uh, changes and different things with COVID and how COVID progresses. And as people continue to get their vaccines and uh, the vaccines are much more prevalent and available to those who desire to get it. And so um, please do consider that. So let us go to the Lord in prayer now. I also remind you to please read the tidbits that we send out, plus you have them on your insert and on your bulletin, so you might read those. Time is taken and put into writing those. So I will uh, start our prayer. Let's have a moment of silence, and then we, I will close our prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege that we have to gather today in your house. Your children have gathered, Lord, to give you praise and give you glory and to honor you today. Lord, I lift up those that they prayed about silently in their hearts. I lift them up to you. They know who they are. You know who they are. And you care. Lord, we lift up all that's on our prayer list. And we pray, Lord, that those who need your care for them, if they are grieving and full of sorrow and loss, in the loss of a loved one, that you are there in the midst to comfort them. That you might bring those who would be and surround them and comfort them. Those that need healing. I pray that you will be with them. Continue to strengthen them. Continue to heal their body and make it whole again. And Lord, there's also spiritual healing. Lord, I pray for those in our world today who need spiritual healing. Lord, I pray that a great revival would break out among your people. And Lord, that more and more people would begin to see that you are the risen Christ. That you're Jesus Christ. You're the Savior of the world. And Lord, that they would no longer be troubled about the matters that surround them. That they would put their faith in you. Lord, we thank you this day for the opportunity that we have together here. We pray that our service will bring praise and glory to your holy name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us now pray our uh, liturgy for grace. Uh, if you would, please stand. We worship you, Lord God, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, you dwell in the high and holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit. Give us grace to bring you the sacrifice of a broken and contrite heart, that you, O God, will not despise.
law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Lord of men and God are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweet also the honey and the honeycomb. God spoke these words, saying, You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witnesses against your neighbor. You shall not touch anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the unrepentant. Incline your ear and hear, for we do not present our supplications before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. <clears throat> Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain in us a willing spirit. Have mercy upon us according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. Thus says the Lord, I will forgive your iniquity and remember them your sins no more. Peace be with you. service. 
Christ joins us together mutually, so that knowing ourselves to be members of his body, we become willing to serve each other. In this spirit, we await the appearing of Jesus Christ. Go forward to meet our Lord with joy, and pray to be found ready when he comes. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen, amen, amen. Please be seated. Lord God, Father, hear, hear us as we pray. pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we do as God to And lead us not into temptation, that the Lord is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Son, Savior of the world, be gracious unto us. Lord God, Holy Spirit, by our Almighty God, you have given us peace at this time to make our common intercessions to you. And you have promised through your blessed Son that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. would come up but each as you enter worship you have an opportunity to give your offering and as you leave the church if you have not had not given your offering then you have that opportunity also I do want to thank New Hope for stepping up and being so generous and supporting New Hope during this time of COVID you have blessed this church you have been givers and you have been generous and we want to thank you for that and Lord, we pray that the Lord will bless you for the generosity that you have had during this time. Always remember that it is to God that we give our gifts, to God that we give our praises, and to God that we give our prayers. Amen. Today our scripture text comes from Acts 3, 12 through 19, Psalms 4, 1 John 3, 1 through 7, and the Gospel of Luke, Luke 24, 36b through 48. Hear now the word of God. The first lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. But he decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked him to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith is through Jesus that gave him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as so did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold you through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The second reading is from the Old Testament, Psalm 4. Answer me when I call you, O God, of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long you, my people, shall, shall suffer and honor, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain and seek his lies? Shalom. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Salah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. That the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, Make me lie down in safety. And from the New Testament, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what, the love, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be just like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And the gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke 24, 36b through 48. And this is when Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at, your, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still, they did not believe because of joy and amazement. He asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. May God bless the reading of his holy word today and may give to each one of us clear understanding. Amen. 
Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, as you open the tomb and raise Jesus to new life, we pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds. Rise us to new life in you, Lord. Father, we are thankful for all that you have done for us, sending your beloved Son to bear our griefs, to carry our sorrows and our transgressions. And we believe by his stripes we are healed, we have been set free. Christ Jesus paid a sin debt, our sin debt in full. He paid a sin debt that we could not pay for ourselves. He has conquered death. He lives today. And he is seated at the right hand, your right hand, in heaven. Father, help us to open our minds and gain your wisdom. Help us to go forth in confidence and to live out your words of truth to us. Lord, I pray this morning that you would send the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. I will step aside. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, a vacuum cleaner salesman in rural Tennessee needed to make a quick sale. So he took his demo vacuum cleaner and all his tools and he proceeded to go to the first house that he saw. He knocked on the door. The lady opens the door. He says, Madam, I hope you're well today. Before she could answer, he entered the house and said, I have got the greatest, most exciting news for you today. I have this vacuum cleaner that will clean your house from top to bottom. You only have to pay so much down. The lady finally spoke and said, well, that really sounds good. The salesman said, you see that pile, big pile of dirt right over there in the floor with all its fur balls and dirt? My vacuum cleaner will pick all that up just like that. And if it doesn't, I'll eat it. Well, the lady stood there for a moment and she kind of paused and she calmly looked at the salesman and she said, well, sir, you better get your spoon and fork because we don't have power out here. I loved that. I thought that was just, you know, and it reminded me of what is going on in our world. There seems to be all this struggle and always has been, in a way, for power. Struggling for power. Everyone wants power. Uh, and it's one of the things that without power, some things just don't get done. And so that's the way I look at it with us. We need our spiritual power. We need the Holy Spirit working within us. And uh, sometimes we need to be recharged uh, at times, but we need the Holy Spirit's power within us. And so I sort of put these together in a way that I entitled it God's Easter Principles. And it's one of the things that we saw here in Luke. We see Jesus and he comes and he's among his disciples and he says, peace be with you. And they're frightened. And, of course, they're feeling grief and sorrow, too. I mean, if your, per your friend and Savior had died, you would think, and he's standing before you, that would be a little shocking, would it not? And here, he had told them all along, this is, this is what would happen. But, like us, a lot of times, we have to be shown. And so, this is what Jesus did. He went and came before them. So I feel like the Easter brings us four principles, and those principles are the principle of peace, joy, hope, and mission. And the first uh, principle would be peace, and that's found in verse 36. And this is when Jesus comes in and says, Peace be with you. And this is not a 
a salutation or a greeting that he's giving. He is saying, peace be with you. It's as though he would be saying, take my peace, have my peace, be of my peace. And so everyone wants peace. I can't tell you how many people I have that say, things will be going along, and I'll say, all I want is peace. I just want some peace in my life, they'll say. Well, I think peace looks different for different people. Uh, not everybody sees peace as the same. Some people feel it's just total tranquility. There's no one around, nothing going on. Well, most people have had that recently, right? If they've been isolated by themselves. So, um, peace is not found in drugs. And it's not found in alcohol and sex and material possessions. Peace comes from God. The Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, living within us. But most of the time in the world, the world tries to find and gather their peace from other things. They don't try to receive it from God. And, you know, I don't know, it's, it's even like when you think about, and we've talked about this in the past few weeks, about a sense of, of an unbeliever. When we come in, we come in and we come to worship God. A lot of times someone that's really an unbeliever and has been convinced to come to church, they come in and they're really at war with God. They haven't quite accepted this whole story that Jesus rose from the dead, that he's the Christ, that he's the Savior of the world. And sometimes it takes people a long time to come to that view. And when they do, oh my goodness, when they do, they are very excited and they do so many things in their lives and serve the Lord. And so it's one of the things that I, it, this kind of reminded me of a story, and I may have told you this before, um, but forgive me if I did, I think it's worth retelling. The psalmist states, for in the days of trouble, he, God, will keep me safe in his dwelling. And he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon the rock. And this comes from Psalms 27.5. In the movie The Bear, a bear cub whose mother died took up with a male bear. They traveled together. The male bear took care of the baby cub. And one of my favorite parts is happened when they got separated. And the little bear was coming up the mountain, and all of a sudden, he stood before a mountain lion. Well, when the mountain lion came at the cub, he stood up, and he tried to look scary like his dad, the big bear, would look scary. Suddenly, the lion started backing away. Well, the little baby bear's cub was thinking, man, I have done it now. Look, I, what I have done. And he thought that he had scared the, the big lion away. But right behind him was the male bear standing in behind him. And I guess the reason I like this story so much is because I know that when I am fearful, when you are fearful, when we have things that are going on in our lives, we have Jesus that's standing with us. And he's in front of us, beside us, behind us, and he's going to be there for us. We do not fight our battles alone. And that should give us all great peace. It certainly gives me peace. I'll put it that way. Our second principle is joy. Uh, and Jesus states, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. You know, I think about the disciples, and you know, we'd say, well, why didn't they believe? Why, why? Think about it. I mean, it almost was too good to be true that they could believe. I've even had non-believers tell me when I share faith with them and talk to them about Jesus. And they'll say, 
I've done a lot of bad things in my life. And you mean Jesus forgives me for those things? And I'm like, yes, he does. You receive him. You accept him. And you are forgiven. You're baptized. You're a part of his family. You become a child of God. And the family of God. Well, sometimes that's hard to believe. And a person that's a non-believer, hasn't been raised in a Christian home, has a lot of problems dealing and struggling with that. But somehow, you just have to put the word out there, you have to speak with them, and you let God do the work. You know, some of us will be out, and some of us will till the ground, some of us will plant the seeds, some of us will water, and some of us will harvest. It's always a little cycle there that we go through in the process. But when it does come around, there's going to be joy in the morning when they realize. Because the byproduct of, of joy is not sorrow and grief. It's feeling joy. It's not like happiness. Happiness can be, you can say, well, I have a happy marriage. Uh, I'm happy with the way my children are doing. It's different. Haven't you ever just really felt joy and, and so excited about things? Surely you have. Give me some nods. Yes, surely you have. It's wonderful to feel that joy. So when I think about joy and how it enriches our lives, it's such a wonderful feeling of waking up in the mornings and feeling that joy and knowing that you are serving the Lord and that the Lord loves you and that he cares about you. And he cares about every aspect of your life. We don't walk our journey of faith by ourselves. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit dwells within us. And we have other Christians who are walking alongside us to be with us. And that's very important. And I think another uh, what I consider one of the greatest things of Easter is the joyous resurrection of Jesus because his resurrection was victory over death and the sting of death and dying no longer had that sting because we too will one day rise again and be with him. The third principle is hope. Hope is something that sometimes is hard to get across to certain people. And it's, well, I guess it, it sometimes is like saying to you, I believe that Jesus, Christ is our hope. The hope of the sense that we will live eternally if we've received him. Do you have people in your life that give you hope? that encourage you? Surely you do. And you like to be around them. Those are the ones you want to be around. Because they give you hope. No one likes to feel smushed down and alone. We all love to be encouraged, and that encouragement gives us hope. Jesus is our hope. At the Minager Clinic in Topeka, uh, Kansas, they did a survey, and the staff unanimously said this, that hope was the one element that helped people with mental illness. That if they lived with hope, that many times they could live a normal life. But they needed that hope. We have to have hope. The final principle is mission. And that's found in verse 40, 47 and 48. Easter brings individual peace, joy, and hope. But it results in an external action 
which is mission. That mission is to take your peace, joy, and hope and give it to others. Share what you've taken in. You know, we can keep this little nugget that we have to ourselves, but it doesn't mean as much as when we share it with others. It's so important to share our faith with others. We don't have to beat them over the head with the Bible. We don't have to criticize them about all the things they're not doing or doing. We just have to share our faith. We can know a lot about Scripture. We can think we know a whole lot about God. I tell you a story about a recent convert to the Christian faith. He was asked by one of his unbelieving friends about Jesus. The friend said to him, I hear you've become a Christian. Yes, said the convert. Then you must know a great deal about Christ, said the friend. Tell me what country he was born in. Well, I don't know, replied the convert. Well, then what was his age when he died? I don't know, replied the convert. Well, can you tell me how many sermons he preached, how many disciples he had, where where he was born, the miracles that he did? How was he raised from the dead? The convert looked, and he sort of looked down, and he said, I don't know. Well, his friend said, I'm sorry, but you sure don't know a lot about this Jesus. To be a con- you know, to have been a Christian, he said. And the convert said to him, You are absolutely right. I don't. I'm ashamed of how little I know. But this much I do know, he said. Three years ago, I was a drunkard. I was in debt. My family was falling to pieces. My wife and children dread for me to even return home. I was desperate, but when I gave my heart to God, now I have given up booze, we are out of debt, and my wife and I are in love once more. All this Christ has done for me. This much I do know, he said. You know, this is actually a true story. And when you think about it, We can know a lot about Jesus, and we can think we have got our stuff together. Well, every time that happens, you sort of crumble. Seems like something, I'm telling you, Jesus has it all together, and he helps us to go forth and do what we're doing. It's not about us, not that we would boast in ourselves. So, and, you know, you can sometimes feel yourself feeling a little bit like that, and it's all about him. And so, it's not so much of all that we have, the head knowledge, but it's a sense of that heart. The heart's changed. You show me somebody that started to take in the scripture, they're listening, and God is speaking to them, and I'll show you somebody that's really had a tremendous heart change. They're not the same. When you accept Jesus Christ, your life is different. You know, after the COVID, when COVID first started, I remember thinking, well, this probably wouldn't last for three months. That's good. We'll go on down the road and everything will be good. And here it just kept lingering and lingering. And I thought, man, when church starts back, the churches will be so full that we won't be able to see them all. Well, You know, that was a fleeting thought that I had. I prayed about it a lot and continue to pray. But you know, God, there's just a few. It's like a remnant. Jesus has got his faithful few. Look at the disciples. The faithful few. Everybody should come and they should be here. I don't, I don't care what, how they work, whatever they do. It's so important to worship. 
so important to be with your church family. Don't you just feel that when you see each other each week? It, it energizes you. I mean, I can hardly wait till we don't have to wear the mask and I can see everybody's face. <laughs> I mean, somebody said, well, you know, you can't tell if we're smiling at you or we're sticking our tongue out, right? I said, yeah, really. So it's, it's one of the things that we're changed, and we're changed because of Jesus Christ. And when we have the peace, joy, hope, and then we put into action the mission, we can change the world. We can truly change the world. It's so important that we live out our faith before others. When I think about that, do we live out our faith before others? Do people realize that we are a Christian? Something to think about. You know, we can believe, and I know a lot of people, oh, they're going to say things about, you know, the resurrection and all, and they don't believe in it. They Just a lot of different things. But we serve a risen Savior, and he lives today. And today he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he is interceding for each one of us. And he loves us. There's no one that's ever loved you like the Lord Jesus loves you. And I think that's so important for people to know. And I think that those who are lost and those who are struggling, be it with mental illness or difficulties in their life, it could give them hope if they knew how much Jesus loves them. Sometimes people just need to know how much Jesus loves them. So as we leave this week, let us go out and let us live the peace, joy, hope, and mission of Christ Jesus, the principles of Easter in our lives. And let us shout that our Lord Jesus has risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Christ Jesus, each day of our lives, your light and love shines on us. Help us to be more like you. Renew our faith. Give us faith that's not afraid to reach out to others. Help us to share the gift of eternal light. A gift that is greater than silver and gold. Lord, I would ask that you would bless us here at New Hope with a vision for renewed and spiritual revival and a future that always, always puts you at the helm. Guide us each day as we minister to one another, as we try to live a Christian life, and help us to bear witness to your name and be led by you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for loving us. We pray all this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please stand for our hymn of departure.
and the power of the Holy Spirit, may you go into the world, fulfilling your calling as disciples of the body of Christ. May joy, peace, wisdom, and mission be upon you as you go into the world, both now and forevermore. Amen.